at all the nuclear disasters. Achita, why don't you take us through some of these disasters that we've had? I think the first had. one that comes to our mind with what's happened is Chernobyl. Yeah. Is Chernobyl in 1986. Everyone is saying we don't want a rerun of Chernobyl. Zelensky said it'll be 100 times worse than Chernobyl. In 1986, all of us remember it. We've all seen documentaries yeah. about it of reactor number four going off, exploding. Generations there has seen result, uh, impact of it. The entire area now is a ghost town. Chef, there are so and many others as well. Just a, 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 a little over a decade later, Tokaimura in Japan was this huge nuclear uh, accident that took place at that uranium uh, facility. This was in 1999. I remember I was in school at that time when this happened. Uh, then you had the, uh, the the 1979 Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania disaster. Uh, a smaller disaster compared to Tokaimura as well as Chernobyl, but you saw what happened there. Then there was the K-19 North Atlantic Ocean uh, disaster. This was way back in 1961 when the Soviet submarine developed a radioactive leak. Many deaths in that. Again, the effect of that are still being felt because of the contamination uh, that took place in the ocean. Earlier than that, just in the post-war era, 1957, uh, in Kistim in Russia, explosion contaminated over 500 miles. So the, the, the number of examples of nuclear lapses, human-made accidents, and bare carelessness as we're seeing today, or just, you know, truly, uh, it, 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 it's almost malicious what's going on in Ukraine right now. We'll have to see how it actually plays out. Is this the beginning of a possible nuclear leak, a nuclear accident, a nuclear disaster? We don't know just yet. For now, this one has been contained, but we're going to take you straight to Zaporizhia next, get you voices from the ground, get an update from the ground. Here's what President Zelensky has just said. Європа зараз повинна прокинутись. Горить найбільша атомна станція Європи. Прямо зараз російські танки розстрілюють атомні блоки. Це танки обладнані тепловізорами. Тобто вони знають, куди стріляють. Вони до цього готувались. Європейці, прокиньтесь, будь ласка, говоріть своїм політикам. Російські війська обстрілюють атомну станцію в Україні. Запорізьку атомну станцію. Місто Енергодар. Там шість енергоблоків. Шість. Чорнобилі вибухнув один енергоблок. And I want to bring Gaurav back in once again, just, just to remind our viewers, because a map is always useful. Our viewers have become, uh, you know, very conversant with where things are in Ukraine right now because we've been covering it in so much detail. This is where Gaurav is standing right now. I'm going to go across live to him. He's in Kyiv and north, south, southeast of Kyiv, all the way across the country, not very far from the Sea of Azov uh, and not very far from Mariupol, where Gaurav was, uh, was reporting from earlier, is Zaporizhia. This is where the that nuclear facility is, that's where the shelling has happened. Gaurav, uh, how is the Ukraine government planning to tackle this right now? They've got a lot of other nuclear facilities, 15 if I'm not mistaken. Zaporizhia was only one of them. Uh, is there a risk to the others as well? Shiv, Zaporizhia is the biggest one uh, with six reactors. There are others, as you very rightly pointed out. There is a threat according to the government here and that is why they want international intervention immediately to stop the war. The conversation yesterday between Ukraine and Russia collapsed except on the point of humanitarian aid and that humanitarian corridor to be established. But overall, the Russian demands remain the same. In fact, uh, President Putin uh, has been quoted as saying that unless these demands are met, uh, their demands will only increase and they want two things. One, President Zelensky's regime to change and two, demilitarization of Ukraine. Uh, not, neither will, uh, would be accepted by President Zelensky because he thinks that he's in a position to continue to fight back. He's held on the Russian forces for eight days and counting. On day nine, the army chief here insists that there are two places, one in Bucha and the other in Luhansk, that they claim that they've been successful in pushing back the Russian forces uh, from, from two urban centers. In the third urban center and the second biggest city here in Kharkiv, while the Russians may de facto uh, be in control of pockets of Kharkiv, uh, the Ukrainian flag continues to fly uh, on the administrative building. Uh, it remains to be seen what happens next because just now the main hope is that that humanitarian co corridor would be formed for, for students and other civilians who may want to get out of Kharkiv and Sumy and get, if possible, to the Belgorod border, which is the closest Russian border, just about 35 kilometers away. How and when will that happen remains to be 
be seen. But Shiv, you were live with both Russians and Ukrainians who have two different sides of the story on whether these children and uh, and these students have been kept hostage in these places by the Ukrainians, a charge that's been denied both by Ukraine and of course even by India, that they've been held hostage there so that the Russian firing is not as intense or even more intense than what it already is and cause civilian damage. So humanitarian corridor is top priority today, at least so that these children can come out of harm's way. Shiv and Akshita. Clearly things are escalating. And as you pointed out, Gora, for India, we're going to be focusing, of course, on bringing out our Indian nationals or students who are currently in Ukraine. Now, this development of what's happening right now at Europe's largest nuclear power plant of a fire of shelling by Russian troops is happening at a time when in the last one week we've seen several warnings from Russia of a nuclear war saying don't poke us, don't push us, we have nuclear weapons. Vladimir Putin in his address yesterday also sent out a resounding message to the world saying that we've got nuclear weapons, don't push us into a corner and make us use it. A very, very important warning, putting it in the context of what's played out right now at the nuclear power plant, with many experts saying Russia knows exactly what it's doing right now at that plant. A week into the invasion of Ukraine, Russia is turning up the heat. The Putin administration is not shying away from dangling the new threat. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has warned a Third World War would be nuclear and destructive and claims Ukraine will not be allowed to acquire nuclear weapons. Ukraine possesses Soviet technologies and the means to deliver nuclear weapons. We cannot ignore the real danger. Let me assure you, a responsible member of the international community committed to its obligations to non-profilation of weapons of mass destruction. Russia is taking every possible measure to prevent Ukraine from getting nuclear weapons and respective technologies. Several nations have condemned the nuclear threat dropped by Russia. Russia has raised the alert level of the preparation of the nuclear deterrence units, which is a dangerous act that may lead to further destabilization of the situations. By enhancing the alert status of its nuclear forces, Russia has taken another escalatory and is irresponsible step. Lavrov's nuclear saber-rattling is not the first time Russia has issued such threats. Four days into the war on Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin had put nuclear deterrent forces on high alert. Dear colleagues, as you can see, not only Western countries take unfriendly measures against our country. In the economic dimension, I mean the illegal sanctions that everyone knows about very well. But the top officials of leading NATO countries allow themselves to make aggressive statements with regard to our country. That is why I ordered Defence Minister and Chief of General Staff to put Russian Army deterrence forces on high alert. Only the US, Russia and China have intercontinental ballistic missiles. And Russia has many options when it comes to delivery of nuclear weapons. Topol-M is one of the most recent intercontinental ballistic missiles to be deployed by Russia. It is the first to be developed after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. The RSM-56 Bulawa is a submarine-launched ballistic missile developed for the Russian Navy. It was deployed in 2013 on the new Bore class of nuclear submarines. Kinzhal is a hypersonic cruise missile it has a claimed range of more than 2,000 kilometers and an ability to perform evasive maneuvers at every stage of its fight. Russia has the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons. Moscow has over 6,000 nuclear weapons, 675 more than the United States. Whereas China has 350, Britain 225, France 300 and India 150. As Putin bears his nuclear fangs, 
the West has responded with calm. The US and allies have so far stuck to sanctions on Russian economy. Bureau report, India Today. Has and Gaurav Savant continues to be with us from Kiev. Uh, uh, Gaurav, uh, the, the nuclear threat has been ratcheted up day on day. If I'm not mistaken, there have been three uh, explicit nuclear threats and today shells have landed at the Zaporizhia nuclear facility, which basically means in the last 96 or so hours, we've seen four direct nuclear threats to the world. That's, that's crazy. You know, this is, this is a situation which goes way beyond the Cold War right now. But focusing on Kyiv right now, uh, Gaurav, I wanted to ask you, because for, for the moment, the nuclear facility, as Akshita just said, has been brought under control. Uh, uh, you know, people are breathing a little easier right now, but it could escalate at any point. What's happening in Kyiv today, Gaurav? We're going to have images on our screen very shortly of that military convoy. Yesterday was a bit of a quiet day. What happened overnight? What's the forecast for today? Shiv, as of now, there's curfew in place, there's martial law in place. Anyone who steps out is shot at. And in, in no uncertain terms, no questions asked, you're seen out in curfew as you are shot at. Unless, uh, you know, you're a part of the militia or you have those signs on various vehicles that indicate that you're an emergency vehicle and you, are, you, are, you can be out. Uh, apart from that... The news is tightening around Kyiv and that is now known to every citizen here. Uh, with that convoy about 25 to 30 kilometers away, uh, with the Ukrainians claiming at least on television that they've attacked that convoy thrice, uh, stalling the advance of that convoy for over four days. Uh, and there are logistics breakdown in that convoy, something that the British intelligence also uh, spoke of. Uh, that this convoy is facing major problems internally. The other fact is that the Russian forces are advancing from multiple sides. If they are targeting Zeprosia, which means they're, cro they're very close to Denepro, they cross Denepro, and then the squeeze on Kyiv starts. Um, overall, if you look at the bigger picture, Shiv, Kharkiv, Kherson, uh, Sumi, these are areas that are being, being uh, systematically targeted. Once children uh, and outsiders are out of this area, it's a matter of time because... The American assessment is that 70% of Russian forces that were amassed at borders are already committed. Uh, in, in Perhaps today or tomorrow, another 20% will be committed. So 90% of amassed uh, you know, Russian troops are already in combat zone. And uh, in, in major parts of this country, the, what, what was the primary aim? The primary aim, Donetsk, Luhansk, uh, Donbass region, the Russians are advancing in that area to ensure that they have water supply to Crimea. Uh, they, they've got Kurdish. They've, they're literally cutting off Ukraine's access to sea uh, from, from the south. Uh, pitched battles, of course, still in and around Odessa, uh, according to some reports. But they're advancing towards uh, Zeprosia. And when you're looking at that map in front of you, it, it is all an indicator that the Russian forces are advancing from the south and the east. They're also advancing from the north. And there are some reports of subversive activities uh, in towards the west, which is an indication that replenishments of these Stinger missiles and AT anti-tank guided missiles and anything that is supposed to come from the West, that may be targeted very soon. Kyiv will then be isolated and squeezed in. After that, whether President Zelensky relents, relinquishes or fights back, it will lead to a very, perhaps as some here argue, a very bloody siege and fight for the Ukrainian capital Kyiv, Shiv. Okay, we're going to come back to you, Gaurav, with those images that Shiv also was referring to, the 3D satellite images of the kind of troop build-up by Russia close to Kyiv. But focusing really on these warnings of a nuclear war, what's played out of the nuclear power plant, what we're seeing, not just in Ukraine, but across the world, is a shortage of iodine tablets. Now, iodine tablet is used, of course, to suppress conditions that you get due to overexposure to radiation. In places like Czech Republic, in Bulgaria, pharmacies are running out now of iodine because of Putin's repeated warnings of a nuclear war. Russia's frequent threats of danger posed by a nuclear war has unleashed a wave of anxiety across Central Europe. From Poland to Bulgaria, people living in former Soviet Union's satellite states are bracing themselves for the worst. Just in case, Putin deploys the ultimate weapon in his quest for supremacy over Eastern Europe. 
passport offices are jammed. Fuel tanks are topped up. People are prepared to leave at a moment's notice. And there is sudden jump in the demand for iodine. While in Poland, the number of pharmacies selling iodine have doubled, Bulgarian pharmacies have sold as much iodine as they sell during the course of a year. In the Czech Republic, many stores have run out of iodine after demand soared. Iodine is considered to be effective in protection against conditions such as thyroid cancer in case of exposure to radioactive material. In 2011, Japanese authorities had recommended iodine for people around the site of the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant. The Russian takeover of the Chernobyl nuclear plant last week also unnerved people in the region. Iodine was distributed in the aftermath of the 1986 nuclear disaster as well. Officials in Central Europe, however, have cautioned that iodine would not be of much help in the case of a nuclear war. Bureau Report, India Today. These images are going to give people sleepless nights for a very, very long time. We're slipping into a short break, but the images of shelling and firing at Ukraine's largest nuclear facility, Europe's largest nuclear facility, and something that could spell 100 times the kind of disaster that happened in Chernobyl uh, is putting the world on edge. Nobody's going to be breathing easy for the foreseeable future. The big story coming in on day nine, Europe's largest nuclear facility has been shelled by the Russians. The big aftermath coming up next.